Okay, folks, so welcome to Monday's Coffee and Revelation. We are uh, maybe a little bit of an apocalyptic sunset behind us. And a uh, big shout out to the folks down in Berkeley on the New South Wales coast. Uh, loved being with you guys yesterday. A great bunch of people. So, And we mentioned Revelation yesterday, so I'm just reminding you of that. And let's go to Revelation chapter 7. We're reading at verse 4. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. From the tri tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000. From the tribe of Gad, 12,000. From the tribe of Asher, 12,000. From the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. From the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. From the tribe of Levi, 12,000. From the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. From the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. From the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000. Well, what do we take from that? The 144,000. It's a long time since I've spoken to a Jehovah's Witness, but uh, I remember one time somebody knocked on my door asking, would I like to live forever on planet Earth? And I said, no, no, I'm one of the 144,000. I'm going to heaven. Uh, apparently, most Jehovah's Witnesses are not going to make it to heaven. Um, not unless they've done enough witnessing and filled out their forms. And it looks like most Jews won't either, if, if that's what's been spoken of here. But this passage is not giving us a list of Jews or Jehovah's Witnesses or Gentiles or others who are in heaven. The 12 tribes of Israel get 12,000 each. Now, interestingly, just notice something here. Dan is not mentioned. We'll come back to that. Uh, and instead replaced with Manasseh. Now, what's this 12,000, this 144,000 meant to symbolize? It's meant to symbolize the completeness, the wholeness, and the fact that none of those who've been sealed by God, who've got God's seal, will be lost. Now, let's come back to Dan. Golden calves were erected in Dan and Ephraim. They were led away from God, and they're not here. They're not in heaven. John is demonstrating that not all those who are part of the church, or at least the visible church, uh, will have been proven to have really received the mark of God. That was true in ancient Israel. Those who are circumcised in heart rather than those who are circumcised just in the body is important. It's true today that there are those who call themselves apostles, as in Ephesus, and they're found to be false. It's true that there are, I'm sorry, one of the reasons I don't believe in baptismal regeneration is there are people who've been baptized who will not be in heaven. I, I love the way um, as well that he begins with the tribe of Judah, even though Judah is not the firstborn. Why, why begin with Judah and not with Reuben? Because Reuben was the firstborn. Because Judah was the one who was told the scepter will not depart from Judah nor the ruler's staff from his descendants until the coming of the one to whom it belongs, the one whom all nations will honour. Genesis 49 verse 10. That did happen. Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah, has come and people of every nation are included in this number. We've seen that already in Revelation. Again, notice the basic principle. We interpret Revelation by other scriptures, particularly in the light of Christ, the Old Testament. We know who the Lion of the tribe of Judah is, that is Jesus Christ. And maybe just one more thing. I, I did say about this being completeness. Why do we say that? Well, numbers are important. They are symbolic. I remember getting a book that kind of went through every single number in the, in the Bible and kind of had it as a, a code, a secret code. No, that's not what we mean. Uh, I read Augustine and sometimes he goes over the top in his numerology. But nonetheless, the use of numbers is important. We've already seen this. Twelve tribes of Israel, twelve apostles. Twelve by twelve is 144. Ten is the number of completeness. 144 times ten times ten times ten. This idea of completeness is really being emphasized. This is the complete church. The Old Testament saints who put their trust in God. 
the New Testament saints who take, look at the cross and the resurrection and put their faith in Christ. Everyone is counted. Everyone is sealed. You know this. It's just great to belong to the Bride of Christ and the Church of God. I know at times we get really frustrated with local expressions and so on, but this is wonderful. Come back tomorrow and we will go on to look at the great multitude, which is really just the same thing, but uh, you'll see. Anyway, God bless you and see you on Tuesday. Bye.